God bless you. And uh, it's so, so good to be found together to worship the Lord as the band is coming up. Uh, yeah, if anyone's visiting with us today, good to have you with us. And welcome, those joining with us online, welcome to church. And we're going to have an amazing time in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's stand together as we open in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you we have time together, Lord God, and just to worship. And thank you, Father God, that you'll just bless our time, Lord, this morning as we gather in this place, Lord God, as we bring our devotion, Lord, and as we just offer up our worship this morning to you. Thank you. And I know you will receive all glory and honor and praise. My Father, we bless you. My Father, we exalt you. My Father, we thank you for this morning that we have together. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you you brought us through a week. Thank you for your grace in our lives, Lord. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for your hand in our families, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you kept us in this week. Thank you for the opportunities that you've given to us in this week, Lord. Thank you for that. And now this morning, Lord, as we begin a new week, Lord, and as we start this week off, Lord, in having time together in worship, bless this time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come, let's worship together. There is 
sing it out this morning. You said it is done. You said you, you said I believe. You said it is done. Come on, church, let's sing it out. Father God, bless your wonderful name. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up very tomb of Lazarus, your voice is calling me out, right now, I know you're able, and my God, come through again, sing it out church, cause you can do all things, you can do a battle. No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know you never will. Hallelujah. Everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new way is blowing right now breaking my heart of stone taking over like a scary coke yeah. and my walls they're all crashing down and right now oh i know you're able and my god would you come
bless you, Lord. God, He's so good. And our God, He is so good. God, He is so good. And He's so good to me we sing God is so good God is so good and our God he is so good oh Jesus you are God he is so you are so good your goodness follows us your mercies follow us Lord Lord you are good in every way for the Lord is good and his love endures forever father you are faithful and we we sing of your goodness this morning and Lord God of your love of your compassion of your wonder in our lives and thank you for your grace upon us today Lord thank you for this time and we can just worship you Lord God and just reflect on your goodness in our lives my Lord Father as we stand here this morning there are people who have come through our doors and maybe just going through a tough time or a tough week or had a difficult Lord time Lord God of late and maybe they are here maybe this downcast heavy laden burden this morning my Father thank you that you are the God who, who strengthens who Lord who encourages who lifts people up Lord God, who, Lord God, who establishes them, Lord God, and you remove burdens and cares, Lord. And I pray this morning just for your love and for your, Lord, for your goodness, just to rest on people today, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the peace of God that surpasses human understanding. It, it governs our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. And I pray that over people this morning in Jesus' name. Father God, thank you. Thank you that I know you intervene in every situation, in every circumstance, Lord, whether it's for university fees or school fees or in whatever area, whether it's regarding the, their health or the spouse or children this morning. Father, you would make a way this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you we can come together and worship you, my Lord. And bless your name as we continue today. I know you are in our midst as we, Lord, just offer up our time and our devotion to you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seats, hello. Let's say hi to a few people and greet them. At least five people if, if we can. You know, just go and say hello to them and welcome them this morning. Got some guests with us today and go make them feel right at home, welcomed and just, yeah, just make them feel loved and cared for and that they made the right decision by coming here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, He is so good. Yeah, He's so good. Amen. To me. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to take up our love gifts and our offerings at this time, and our leaders are just going to help us with that today. And as you hold your seed in your hands this morning, um, you know, we're just going to pray over that today and just, you know, and, and just lay that before the Lord. Our Father, thank you for this morning. We even have to give in your kingdom. I just pray a blessing over every home and family. And I ask of you, Lord, you'd meet every need today in Jesus' name. And that, Father God, you'll just provide, Lord, and you'll supply and you'll, you'll open the doors for your children. We pray this this morning in Jesus' name. And for those in their business or in their work that are trusting you, uh, Lord, for an open door, I thank you this morning, uh, Father, that you would make that possible today in Jesus' precious name. Enable us to be good ground and fertile ground, Lord God, today. We thank and honor you, for we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. As our leaders come around, I'm just going to do our announcements at the same time. So our ministries are all reopening. So on Tuesdays and on Saturdays, we have prayer. Tuesday is at 6 p.m., Saturday is at 6 a.m., on Wednesdays, our children's ministry that we host on a Wednesday is going to start up this coming Wednesday. So uh, just uh, with regards to that. And then on Thursday, our Bible college is opening. Friday uh, is youth. So those of us who have kids who are in high school, uh, they will come to our youth, youth ministry on Friday. Uh, that's at 6.30. 
And then on Sunday is our two morning worship services. And in that two services next Sunday, our children's ministry on Sundays will launch. Then just some announcements for the first week in February. Uh, we have Dr. Ranley Reddy who is coming. And he's going to be with us on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Friday night, we're going to be having a, a meeting for youth and young adults. And then on Saturday is Pastor Jen's book launch. And then on Sunday, he's going to come and, and share with us at church. Now, we initially were going to have two services, I'm mean, sorry, one service. But looking at the amount of folks that are coming to the first service at the moment, uh, we're going to struggle for space. So what we're, going to, well, what we're going to do is that we're going to have two services on, on the 5th of Feb. So instead of one, we'll have two. So we'll have the 7.30 slot and then the 9.30 slot. And Pastor Ranley will preach at both of those services on that Sunday morning. And then just further announcements for February, we have Pastor Kojo Wood from the UK. He's going to be coming as well. He's going to be with us from the 16th to the 19th of February. We'll be hosting some, some, some meets there. He's going to meet with our young adults. Uh, Pastor Kojo comes from a chartered accountant background. So he's going to meet with, our, with, our, with some of our young adults. And then I'm hoping to have a men's meet uh, with, with Pastor Kojo as well. And then, uh, then we will have church as well on, on the 19th of Feb. But looking forward to that. Just some announcements with regards to some um, of our dates ahead for February. Amen. And then also we have music school that we started. We had about almost 18 children yesterday that came to our music school. Uh, some are a bit small, but they're getting there, learning how to play a few things. And yeah, it's, it was, it's really nice and fresh and organic. Uh, in terms of like raising kids from our lo own local church. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, you'll see one of the drummers going to be part of the, the service as well. So I'm really looking forward to what lies ahead of us. And uh, so those of us who have kids that come to music school, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll forward you a message with regards to time scheduling because uh, we want to schedule uh, drums at a certain time, guitars at a certain time, and keyboard at a certain time so that you don't have to come like, uh, too early for the for if your kid is not going to be involved in in that particular creative art. Okay, so that's just some announcements that we want to leave you with this morning. Uh, I want to turn our attention to the book of First Thessalonians chapter five, and we're going to read from verse number four through to verse number eleven. Amen. But you brothers are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, put love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation, through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Amen. I entitled this message this morning, Build. And since we are like at the beginning of the year, and um, you know, still fresh with maybe some um, thoughts, plans, goals, resolutions, that we may have put together for our lives, I thought that, you know, to share on, on a subject that I've entitled Build. Um, in context, this, the, this passage of scripture is written by Paul. It's, it's an epistle to the church in Thessalonica. And in this particular you know, chapter, he's, you know, and, 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 and book, uh, or rather letter, you know, he speaks about the end times and he speaks about, you know, um, of our eternal life in Jesus. And so we, you know, we find that he, he speaks about that you know, that we aren't children of the day, you know, we don't live in, you know, we're not people of darkness, but instead we are children of light. That's who we are, we belong to Jesus. Um, and, and, and he speaks of that, you know, we are to be alert and self-controlled, amen? There's two aspects of our lives. He speaks of that, you know, if I may say, that how we should clothe ourselves, you know, we should have the, the helmet of salvation on, you know, we should have love as a breastplate. Uh, we should have a, a hope, you know, uh, of salvation that, that is within us. So it should be evident within our lives. And as he speaks to the church about this, he then comes to verse number 11. And he says, you know, encourage one another and build each other up just as you are doing. That's the verse that I want to speak to us about. So the church in Thessalonica was an amazing church because they encouraged each other. But also they built each other up. 
And you know, I, I often share this, is that it takes a lifetime to build things, but it takes a moment to break it. You know, it's easier to break something than build something. Uh, uh, building something would take, take a while, take a long time. But man, I tell you, you just bring a wrecking ball in and it's gone. Amen? It's gone. It's, it's, it, you just take a, take a hammer and just put it through it and it's gone. You know, you, 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 know, you just throw it and it's gone, it's broken. But yet it takes a lifetime to build it. And, and he says this, he says, he says you, know, you know, you're encouraging one another, you're building each other up, keep doing it. And, you know, as, as, as people of God, you know, we should be building rather than breaking. Rather than destroying, we should, we should build each other up. And this morning as a sermon, I thought, you know, let me, let me share a sermon around building you and encouraging you. Not that we don't do it always, but on the aspects of building and building your life. You know, um, you know when the clock changes over to 12 o'clock, especially on the 1st of January, uh, you know, the thing that actually just changes is that it's the date that changes. The purpose should be still the same in our lives. You know, we should be continuing. We should be layering into the new year. That's what we should be doing, layering of what from last year we should be layering. But I thought about layering something, though, is that you can't lay on something if you haven't finished it. Yeah? You've got to finish and then lay as well. So it means if this year you've got to take time to continue building what you started last year, then you've got to continue building what you started last year before you attempt something new. Amen? Because if not, what's going to happen is they're going to keep a lot of things un unfinished. We're going to have a whole collection of unfinished things that are lying around. And we will very often not get around to finishing it. And so this morning, you know, I just want to encourage us in, in aspects. I do hope that maybe just towards maybe a few months down the line when we do have some, when I can have a consistent amount of time um, to actually preach on a series around Bill for five weeks. That's what I want to do and use this sermon that I have five points with, but actually use it as a series. So I do hope that in the next maybe couple of months that I'll, I'll get that opportunity just to, to just speak over these five things that the Lord's dropped into my heart to just share with the church. So the first you know, aspect, and before we get there, is that it's, it's to remember that as a person, we are, we, are, we are body, mind, and we are spirit. That's we were tripartite beings. You know? And it's, it's so important that we, we keep the whole of ourselves in check and in balance. It's important. That we, you know, out of balance and, uh, is one of the most dangerous things that, that we could ever live in. Uh, it'll cause us to be frustrated when we're out of balance. It may cause us maybe not to be frustrated sometimes, maybe anxious, maybe stressed, worried. Um, it, you know, so, so out of balance is, is, is not a place that I believe that God would want us to live in. God would want us to live in a, a, you know, in a manner where we live in balance. Amen? Amen, you with me? Amen. So, as we are tripartite beings, body, mind, and we are spirit beings, um, there's five areas that I want to uh, encourage us, not challenge us in, but this time encourage us with regards to paying attention and continuing to build through the year. Amen? To continue building. So the first area that we should be continuing to build in, and, of, and with these thoughts and with these points, I have like even one word just attached to it that, that we will be able to remember it, right? By If you don't remember the whole, the whole statement. The first, the first area of building is that First and foremost, is that as a child of God, we've got to pay attention to continue to build a steadfast relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? A steadfast relationship with Jesus Christ, which means a consistent relationship with the Lord. Building that. And if you have to think about a word, I'm using the letter D with these single words, is the word disciple. So moving from just being a decision for the Lord, where I gave my heart to Jesus, but now living with him. In other words, walking with him. Now for some of us who are, who are doing that, is to continue with it. For some of us who are struggling with it, it means we need to pay attention to it. Because what I realize about life is that without Jesus, we're nothing. Without him, we're nothing. Uh, without him in our lives, man, life already is so difficult. I can't imagine doing life without him. And so we need him every day, which means, you know, just the simple things about building is starting our day with the Lord. There should be no compromise with regards to that. And in as much as we have so much of things that we've got to attend to, how about making him priority in our lives and giving him some aspects of, of, of our day? And the best place to start with is the first thing in the morning. It's the first thing. Before we, 
before we, we, we may do anything else or attempt to the day and address things in the day and before we start pulling our work out and before we start pulling our homework out in the morning, like I hope you, some of our kids don't do what I used to do, we're doing homework. It was always done the day before, we're doing it before we go to school and the next morning. And sometimes not finishing going to school early, so when your friends come and then you copy from them and then you get your homework done. I just hope you don't do that. Children don't learn from me with regards to that. But I pray that, you know, before we do anything or attempt anything in the morning, that we do make some time with the Lord. The king, David, Psalm 63 said, early will I seek you. Early. It's to make him, you know, tabernacle with the Lord in the morning. Start your day with the Lord. Before you put Netflix on, before you check the news, before you even see a WhatsApp. I mean, if your spouse is next to you, who's so important is going to send you a WhatsApp at night if your spouse is lying next to you? If your kids is in the house and you're living, who's going to send you WhatsApp at night that is so important if they didn't have to ring you about it? Hello. You see, it's about how we just start our day off. It's so important. And we have to start it well. And we've got to start it right. You know, have to start it. We've got to have our breakfast with the Lord in the morning. Amen? Before we have any other cereal. Have, have some time with the Lord. And, and, and make it a priority. And, and watch what the Lord will do in your life. Watch what, you know, what, he, what the benefits of that. Now, I can speak about the benefits of, from a personal experience, but you have to experience it yourself in order, to, in order to understand the value of it is of when you did life without Jesus in the morning when you started off and when you do, actually do it. You watch how the Lord helps you through the day, how he gives you wisdom through the day, how he gives you understanding through the day, and even when, the, when, when stuff go wrong in the day, because you know that stuff goes wrong in the day. You know that you're going to get upset with people in the day. You're going to get angry with people in the day. Come on. Don't get all religious on me. Like, you don't get upset with anybody, and you don't get angry with anybody. And when somebody frustrates you and somebody irritates you, you've got to leave your driveway sometimes, and they're already irritating you. Come on. It's that, you know, there's... And, and watch how the Lord can save you in terms of your responses and teach you. Because sometimes in that morning, you know, maybe you went through a devotional passage that you read through, and that, that morning, that, that would have saved you from anger on that day. Because you just started with the Lord. You know, see, it's, 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 it's so important. And, you know, it keeps you through the day because sometimes the Lord may, may use you because you, you, you read something in the morning that was so beneficial to you that you could be sitting with somebody, whether it's on a train or whether it's in a taxi or in a bus or whether you, as you arrive at school or whether at work and then they may be struggling. But because you had something as a devotion in the morning, you got something to bring to them if they are opening up to you. If you have nothing to bring to them, you, all you're going to do is going to go, Akshay, man. You see? How God can use that little moment that you would have thought of it's just you and the Lord together, how God can use that moment that you would have had with him or as a family, that with somebody else in that morning. It was, it was just such a blessing to them. But you have to start with God. And you start by the simple things. This is building a steadfast, and you do it every day. You do it, and then suddenly it becomes just part of your DNA and part of your life. So it just becomes part of that. And the fruit from that, man, that's endless. The fruit from that will be endless. And watch what God would do in and through your life. So it's to build that. There's a few passages of scripture that I want to leave with you this morning. Um, the first being in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 6. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. So just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Now, there are, there, are, there, are, there are three dates that you must pay attention to in life, especially if you're a husband, right? First date, your wife's birthday. Second date, when you got married. And third date is when you gave your heart to Jesus. When did you give your heart to Because you see, that was the most, the most transforming day of when your life turned around, that you're at the place where you are today, restored, healed, delivered, set free. Amen? It was a day in your life when you made a commitment to serve the Lord. That day. So that's the day you received Jesus. Amen? Mine it is the 11th of September, 1997. One can't forget that day. Wife's birthday, 24th April. Wedding day, 15th April. Can't forget. Three days. Everything else, 
<laughs> Three important dates. But most important, as a child of God, in these dates that you will remember, is the day that you gave your heart to the Lord. And he said this, he said, you know, he said, go back to the passage of Scripture, guys. He says, so just as you received Christ Jesus as, as Lord, so you, you, you made a decision to accept him, he then goes on to say, now you need to add to that. And what you do? You live in him. In another translation, it says, walk with him. Amen? So as you received him, now live in him. Build a relationship with Jesus. Not as someone who's distant from our lives that we remember once in a week, like a distant connection somewhere down the line, but that he is part of our lives. And he's part of our, our livelihood. That he's our reason, he's our, he's our everything. We live with him, we talk to him. So even when things are frustrating, talk to him. That even when things are, are, are not in order, talk to him. When, you know, when you're going through struggles, talk to him. When we're excited, talk to him. When we're happy, talk to him. See, it's, it's, it's a way of life. And it's about building that within our lives. 1 John chapter, chapter 2, I, I've shared from this before. And see what the Bible says from verse 3 to 6, if I'm not mistaken. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Amen. Walk as Jesus did. So if we claim to know him but do not follow his commands, uh, in a translation it says we deceive ourselves, or in the translation I've got this New International Version up on screen is, you're a liar. That, that's what it says. It says, so what has to happen is that, it's, you know, if we say we follow Jesus, then, then we've got to walk with him. So it must tie together. So how you do that is by building a relationship with the Lord. That he's not just some figure, some idol, some, something that's somewhere that's there, and that he's not a part of our lives. That the only time we would have him a part of our lives is maybe when we're in trouble or or maybe at some point when we've got to dedicate a car or dedicate a child or get married, that's the time we remember about him. No, he's got to be a part of our everyday life. And so as a person, as a tripartite being, it's very important and one of the most key things as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to build a relationship with him. And so may I encourage you that in this year, that as you're building many things in life, is to be building your relationship with Jesus. The second thing is to build strong marriages and family life. Amen? A strong marriage and family life. It's very important. Now, it's not to say that marriage is not going to go through trouble. Every marriage is going to go through trouble. Everyone. You're going to have hardships. You're going to have hard days. You're going to have difficult days. You're going to have some tough times. You can have some difficult times in marriage and in life and in family when kids come along. But it's to, it's, it's, when you build a strong marriage relationship, it's not to say that it's not going to have problems. It means you'll be able to withstand problems when it comes. Amen? You'll be able to withstand. It won't be brought to an end. But you'll be able to withstand and be able to work through the, tri the trials or the struggles that you would go through. So it's important that you, that, that you and I, we continue to build a strong marriage before we go to family. So it's to realize this, that before we are parents, grandparents, we are first husband and wife. That was the relationship where everything else came from. So as that relationship where everything came from is that is to ensure we're nurturing and caring for each other. So even if you're married for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, Hopefully, we're pushing 70 years, God willing, that it must still be loving and caring. Amen? Ooh, we're quiet in this room this morning. Strong marriage relationships are key for a home. Key. If you don't have a strong marriage, your family is going to be in shambles. You can't have a strong family life with your children if your marriage is in trouble. So it means if you're not building your marriage well, you've got to pay attention in this year. If you're struggling in your marriage right now, you need to put some effort and focus into marriage at the moment. 
and make some investments into marriage and start building or, 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 or start dealing with what is the problem within the marriage right now or, or start dealing with, with the, you know, the unhappiness that is in the marriage right now. And, and dealing with it is not walking away. Dealing with it is, is about rectifying it and genuinely working through the struggle, working through the problem. But building a strong marriage is so important for the life of your home and your family. It's important. Marriage is ordained by God. Jesus' first miracle was at a wedding. It speaks of the value that he places on marriage. God said, for what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. Amen? He breathed on marriage. You know, he breathed on it. It is an institution that is from God. Now, what's going on in our world, as we know, is that marriage is being lessened as a value in our world today. You can just live together and not be married in our world. Come on, I think it's time that we, as the church, you know, we bring it back into our society and back into culture of the value and of the institution of marriage which God breathed. Amen? It may not be perfect, but when we do it God's way, God will keep the marriage. So it's to realize this, we're going to build it. So what it means, you know, don't follow Hollywood trends, date night, whatever, whatever, and all of that. You know, it's that it's not a, it's, we're not living in a fantasy. We live in a real world. Amen? Don't follow the patterns of Hollywood. You know, all of those individuals at Hollywood, as we know, you know, are struggling to keep one marriage at the moment. The majority of people were in Hollywood as superstars and were acting all of these lovey-dovey movies that we all just fall in love with and all of that and these romantic comedies that make you, you know, cry and all of that. They themselves, they can't apply it in their lives. They're on their, they're on their third wife, maybe fourth wife, or third husband or fourth husband, are struggling to keep it together. You with me? Struggling. So we can't base that as a model. We can't use it as, as a model in life. We have to be making certain that we build marriage and we build our marriage relationship, which means you're going to be paying attention to it. It means, you know, you've got to go out together. You've got to spend some time together. You have time together to, to converse, to have, to have chats together, to have coffee together or tea together or, you know, go away on holiday together. But to spend time together because the input in that, really, ah, but what about the children, man? I feel so, you know, if we feel so bad, we're going to leave them at home and we're going to go. But you see, this is about the well-being about your, your, your children. You see, because if your relationship is, is strong, it's to the benefit of your children. Amen? It's to the benefit of the children. When a marriage relationship is strong, when a marriage relationship is poor, it's going to be to the detriment of our children. That's what will happen. So I want to encourage us this, this morning is to be paying attention to marriage and then to family life. And to family life is with regards to children, to grandchildren, to the extended family. Is to make certain that we're building a strong family and family home and family environment. And for that to happen, we have to be present. Fathers, you have to be boringly consistent and be present at everything. It will be shameful if that by choice, amen, if it's by choice, we decide not to attend events that our children are a part of. It'd be shameful. Now, when it's work that you have no option that you cannot get out of, or you're not well, that it can, you cannot get to, to events or to occasions that your children are a part of, that's okay. But when you choose not to go, and you choose to be with your friends on the beach or in the bar, in a pub, come on, people, that is shameful. That is shameful. And even if it is some insignificant thing, that doesn't matter in life and whatever. But what you're showing is that I'm present as a dad or I'm present as a mom. Amen? I'll be there, regardless. I'll be cheering on. I'll be clapping. If I'm the only person clapping in that room for you, I will be there. You, what you can know, like, you'll be there in the back. I'll be there screaming and shouting for you. Don't worry about that. That's one thing you don't have to be concerned about. We will be there. You see, these are, these are some very key things and important things that as Building a family environment, family environment where we have the privilege of sitting around a table that's lost in our world today. We know the television dominates our home. We, we, we all have rooms together. We no more share the whole house together as families. Remember the days when everyone stayed in the same house, right? Now, in talking about same house, meaning the same room. Now it's like everyone's got their own room and the house is so big, like you won't see your children for weeks on end. Yeah? So big, weeks on end, you won't even know where they are. You know how involved some parents are with regards to our children? They're uninvolved. You don't know what's going on in the life of your kids. 
Come on, that cannot happen. We have to have a, a free and open, you know, way. You know, we were just chatting this morning. You know, in the era that I grew up in, life was different. Parenting styles were different. And if we have to implement the same parenting styles in this day, we will lose our children. So that's where we've got to break culture with regards to certain things that maybe we don't approach with the lives of our kids. Our girls must be able to come to us and say, you know, Daddy, this boy likes me. And you should keep your emotions in check and not get all angry and like, where's my belt? You know, when we were, when in our generation is different. But you see, because you've got to then ask the next question, okay, dear, who, who's this boy? Is he working? Is he, you see, what you'll be looking out for as a dad is the well-being of your daughter, isn't it? It's like, okay, this boy is going to be naturally interested in her because she's beautiful. So what we have to do is sit her down and say, okay, do you think you're ready for this at the moment? Okay, let me interview the boy. I mean, let me see the boy. <laughs> right. Come on. You see, you, it's an inviting envi environment because why? Then you'll be able to see, hey, is this guy going to pull her down? Is this guy going to hurt her? Is this guy going to be toxic to her that she doesn't fulfill the, the purpose and mandate that God has for her life? You with me? You see, we can't just let it be because it, it's, it's not going to, in the culture that we're living in, in the world that we, we're living in, there's just too much going on. It's too much. And the thing is, is if, 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 if our girls or if our boys are going to be, be counseled by their friends, where are they going to end up? Where are they going to end up? If they're getting advice from their friends about this, this person, or they're going to get advice about what to do. I mean, where would they go to? Where would they end up? And that's what's going on because we're silent about so many things in our home. And the thing about this is that our homes and our tables should be for free expression, not for impressions. Impressions is not for anybody. Even if the doilies are not in place, it's all right. It's fine. Even if dog hair is all over, never mind. Because it's not for impressions. Our homes are for expression. You must be able to express yourself because you're at home. You're right at home. It's the place where you can take your shoes out, isn't it? And even if it's smelly feet, it doesn't matter. It's your home. It's your home. And there at home, what should we encourage is it's for free expression. We should be able to relate with each other and talk about things and have some, some encouraging and wholesome chatter about stuff that's going on in life. You know, because the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour. And one of the things that he wants to devour is family. Because once you, you remove marriage, you don't have family. And once you don't have family, you have a broken society. And look around us. Look around us. We've got a broken society. Why? The family model is removed. And right now, the enemy is winning this battle, church. I think it's time that we get into the enemy's battle and take back, isn't it? What God ordained. And it starts not with somebody else. It starts with us. It starts with us. It starts with our homes. It starts with our kids. You know, as I said, they, we should be able to, to talk to our children about anything. And they should be able to talk to us about anything. So building that strong value. Then, you know, investing that where we, we go out together. And, and I know some people may say, yeah, it's so expensive to do that. So expensive. We do have a lot of other things that's quite expensive in our homes. You know, in Buya furniture and <laughs> sovereign, sovereign pendants and all of that. We've got expensive things that we have, right? Don't get me wrong, it is expensive, you know, but we're not saying go where J-Lo goes and all of that. We're saying, I'm sure we can go to the beach together and take the food from home and sit under a tree there. And build some memories together. Amen? Build some memories together. You see... Got to make these investments in order for it to be a strong home and family. And that you can only build. I can't build that for you. No one else can do it for you. You can only build that. And I want to encourage you. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard. It's hard to take the first step. You know, we were just talking this morning with our, some of our dads are speaking to us. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to say, you know, especially if you came from a home that, that never said, I love you. Or came from a home that, I, you know, I forgive you. If you didn't come from that environment, it's very hard for you to take the first step. But the thing is, is when you do take the first step, it, it breaks the ice. And when it breaks the ice, it breaks the chain. And what happens is that it makes it easy from that point onwards. So it's about just taking the first step. So building, building strong homes and a strong marriage. There's a couple of passages of scripture that I want to just um, leave with us this morning. Um, and if we can maybe just turn there quickly. Go for it, love. 
Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So this is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, right? And under this thought, I put the word, as you had disciple, as building a strong relationship with Christ, and now building a family and building a strong marriage, this is devoted, being devoted. And the passage of scriptures that I've used first is Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another. Be compassionate, forgiving each other as Christ forgave you. Now the thing is, it's so easy for us to go forgive everybody else. Come at home. We show compassion to everyone else. We can't be kind at home. Now we're working in reverse, isn't it? We're working in opposite. It's so important that it first starts at home. We've got to be kind at home. We've got to be compassionate at home. We've got to be loving at home. We've got to be, we've got to be merciful at home. We've got to be forgiving at home. Amen? We've got to be smiling at home before you smile at anybody else, anywhere else. You with me? <laughs> Come on. It starts at home. Otherwise, we, we're losing it. You know, it all starts at home. And in the life that we're living in, and I know, you know, you know it's with tougher, you know, especially you know, when it's different generations and growing up, but we're living in a different world altogether. And the thing is, is, is that, you know, as men and as ladies, we've got to work hand in hand, isn't it? We've got to work together. I'm gonna, I'll speak just now about, about, about something that we just found out of the blue when we were doing a game drive. We'll get there just now, right? I don't want to jump the gun. Devoted, that's what we're speaking about. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. You see, for it pleases the Lord. You know, when we submit, when we love, when we obey, what does it do? The end result, it, it pleases the Lord because why are you doing it his way? You know how many in a home, family, and in a marriage pleases God? Where there's unity, God commands a blessing there, isn't it? Commands a blessing. But while we were on a game drive, all right, uh, not too long ago, we came across a bird. It's called a dihamokop. Yeah, it's an Afrikaans bird. Yeah, I got it right, Sharon. Dihamokop. Dihamokop is the hammer, hammer, hammerhead, right? It's a bird, a little bird. And uh, so it was uh, just walking in the road. It was, it was like a day like today, so there was not much sighting. And so Pastor Jen took a photo of it, and then, you know, and then came home and, and all of that after that. And then in the afternoon, she was scrolling through all of this. And she was like, then, I don't know how she discovered it. But then she, she then, you know, it, it sort of interested her. And then she discovered a whole lot of things about the bird. And, and, and yesterday, while I was preparing for the sermon, I remembered about it. I said, let me go and, and research it myself as well. And then what I discovered about this bird, the hammercorp, right, is firstly, apart from it being a, a hardhead, a hammerhead, right, is that this bird has a compulsive behavior of building nests, right? It builds nests. It's not a very big bird, but it builds a, it builds a nest of about one and a half meters, right? It uses about 8,000 twigs to build a nest, right? So it's quite a big nest. But more especially, Uncle Victor, it plasters its own nest with mud. With mud. It plasters. It actually puts a dome roof on it. Then it has a, it got like a little passageway for itself to go inside. And in the back, mommy, daddy, and the baby lives inside there. How's that? But to top it off, this bird, right, it takes about 10 to 14 weeks to build a nest. And the thing about this, this bird here, it builds between three to five a year. So it means it's taking the whole year to build nests. Build nests. It got me thinking, so what's so unique about the bird that we can learn from it in our own lives, that we can apply to, is that, you know what, don't ever think that we reach a stage of where we're never building in life. Got to continue to be building. Amen? Build stronger, build stronger, isn't it? Keep building, keep moving, keep, keep heading to, he, heading forward, isn't it? Keep moving. The other thing that you learn from this bird is that in pairs, as, as sort of like husband and wife bird, right? It is said that they build together. They build the nest together. It's amazing that a bird like this, that in harmony what they are able to do, because this size of, of nest, generally, an eagle will build. But that two little birds is able to build it together. It's amazing what you do when you're in harmony, rather than when you're on opposite sides. You know, in some homes, it's a tug of war in a home, rather than in harmony. So my encouragement to you is this, you know, you want the blessing of God? Build in harmony, build together. Build together, because we can learn that from a bird. A bird, a bird, a bird is building together. Learn that, you know, building never stops in our lives. We've got to keep, keep, keep investing, keep building into it, building into our lives, keep, keep maintaining our homes and our families, because for the health for the well-being of our homes, build. So, don't neglect your home, your family. Don't neglect your spiritual life. So be devoted at home. 
The third thing is to build a healthy mind and a healthy body. Discipline is the word. It's very important that, you know, how we process through our minds. It's key. So we've got to have a growing mind. We've got to ensure that our mind is processing good thoughts, pure thoughts. You know, it's easy to, 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 to lead to evil thoughts and ungodly thoughts. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7, the Bible says, as a man thinketh so easy. You know, it's, it's, it's how we think. That's how we're going to, you know, if you're wondering why a person is maybe behaving in the way they are, just got to just assess their thoughts, what's going through their mind, what's being processed through their minds. Then you start to see, okay, that's where, you know, this happens. So say, for instance, somebody has a perception of somebody, and you're wondering why they're ignoring them or, or why they're treating them that way. Well, it's because it's what they're thinking. But they process through it. So it's very important that, you know, when it comes to people, give them the benefit of the doubt. Always have an open mind. So have, a, have thoughts. That we, remember this, because as a man thinks so easy. And, you know, again, on just on that, we can just go on and on and on and on. Yeah. Amen? Now, the enemy will target your thoughts. Be careful about that. Guard your mind. Amen? For out of it flows the wellsprings of life, isn't it? Guard your heart. Keep it guarded. So... It's so important that, you know, we are producing the right thoughts. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Paul says this. Is, he says, he says, you know, so for whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, think on such things. Amen? Think on such things. So it's so important that in building our lives that we address maybe areas, maybe we struggle in our minds, maybe we have a weak mind, maybe, you know, maybe we battle with that. It's so important that we, we deal with it and we, we overcome it. It means dealing with it goes to the extent of speaking to somebody and getting counsel for it, we should never be embarrassed about it. Break the cycle, amen? Break the stigma, amen? Sometimes, you know, some of us are, are mentally ill. It's important that we get help for that, like we would if our arm is, hurt, is aching, amen? It's important. If we're struggling with it, it's so important that we, we get help for it. So building a healthy mind is so key. And then also building a healthy body. Third John 1, John is writing and addressing the elders. And he says, you know, you know I, 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 I wish you that, that just as your soul prospers, that your body will be in health. You will have a healthy body so that your soul will prosper. Your body will prosper. And so it's so important that in the time that we're living in right now, is to be taking care and building a strong body. Amen? A strong body. You know, and, and, and that is just being disciplined about it, and that's being disciplined about what we eat and, you know, what we put down and, you know, what we drink and, you know, and, 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 and exercise and making sure we're active, making certain about these things. It, it's important. You know, as a child of God, it's so important that, that we should be healthy, fit, and, you know, when 20-year-olds can't climb a staircase, it's a problem. When a 10-year-old can't run up a hill, it's a problem. It means they're spending too much time watching TV and other people running up the hill. <laughs> amen? They should be playing. They should be fit and healthy as a child, amen? Just remember that. We're in a world, we have a problem of obesity right now. And that's because, because McDonald's has become so accessible to us. Amen? Because now we stop cooking at home. It's, it's easier to get meals from elsewhere. But with that, you know, it's, it's, it's not creating a healthy environment within ourselves. It's so important that we take care of ourselves. Amen. I know this is not very spiritual right now, but we have to. We are body, mind, and we are spirit. Now, we can't just only focus on the spirit. We have to also focus on the body and take care of it. We can't just say, no, no Jesus will help me eat this, this KFC every day. <laughs> no, not going to work. After a while, we're going to battle and have a heart attack. Amen. It's going to lead to that. And then we're blaming the devil. No, why are you at the KFC every day? Yeah, the devil tempted me. <laughs> then don't give in to the temptation. Amen? It's discipline. That's why I put that word discipline. So we must be a disciple, build a relationship with Jesus, must be devoted, build strong marriages and build family life. Then we must be disciplined. It's about discipline in this. Amen? Exercising discipline. So much I can share about it, but I will share it in the series going forward. The fourth thing is to build a strong work ethic. Diligent. Amen? That's a dying commodity at times in our lives. 
You gotta get it also in balance where work is taking too much of our time and taking everything and it's becoming everything to us. We've got to be so careful about that because that's what the enemy can use, isn't it? Can use in our lives that lures us away that before long and before we know it, that our, that our lives are in mess and in ruins. Amen? So diligent, though. we still got to have a, a great work ethic. Great work, work ethic. Now, there's a few passages of Scripture that I, I want to bring to our attention that's found in the book of Proverbs. Let's see what the Bible says. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. Amen. Diligent hands will rule. You know, people who are diligent, they often become the managers or the CEOs or the bosses. How it got them up there was sometimes you've got to go and ask them, so what was their practice every day? You know, somebody whose business is successful and they're doing well and they have a legacy of that, is that you got to ask them sometimes, and they will often will tell you they had to do some things that was speaking of that word, diligent. Amen? You go quiet. We have to be that. You've got to build a strong work ethic. You see what's, what'll go on sometimes at work is that, hey, people will chit 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 with each other, you know, about this and about that and about that and about that, but in the process, we're not being diligent. And in the process, we're going to miss out of what diligent hands produce. Amen? So it doesn't matter what's going on in somebody else. This is about your race that you're running. Amen? And so we have to make certain that we have diligence that is within us. Let's see what else the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. I think we've got too many people that, that exist to that little bottom line, yeah? Mere talk. You know, there's so many people that will tell you how to do something, but they don't know how to do it themselves and never did it a day in their life. But hard, all hard work, all hard work will lead to gain. Mere talk, if we're just talking about it, not doing anything about it, it's not going to get us anyway. It's, it's going to profit us in any way. So I want to encourage us. You know, as we read on, you find the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and it's speaking about masters and slaves. And he speaks as, as slaves. He says, you know, speaking about that in whatever you're doing, in terms of work, do it unto the Lord. And do it with the right heart. That's what he says there. As serving the Lord. Amen? So tomorrow when you get up and you're going to work, you know, do it unto God. Amen? Do it to his glory. Do it for his honor. Serve him through the work that you're doing that he's put into your hands. Amen? And I know sometimes we complain about it and somebody like, oh, why must I go and work there? And da -da -da -da, these people are so da -da 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 and we go one way. 39% of the working population in our country don't have a job. Amen? Can I say that again? 39% of the working population in our country don't have a job. Out of that 39%, 50% of them Maybe you're young and you don't like the job you're doing right now, but it's okay. There's people within your age group that will do anything to have the job that you're in. And what we are to be doing is that we've got to be diligent about it and serve the Lord through it and leave the rest up to God. Have a good work, work ethic. You know, if, if we have a company car, use it for company work, amen, unless we get permission for it. Amen? Diligent, isn't it? Don't abuse company resources. Amen? It's, it's, you know, on company time. What are we doing on company time? You know, it's, it's a just bringing, we got to bring it back. Can we do that? Can we bring that back? You know, off days are off days. Holidays are holidays. Work days must be work days. Amen? And then we put the effort behind it. As unto the Lord, not unto man. And I promise you, when you carry that attitude, and I carry that attitude, and we carry that attitude together in the society we're living in, man, I tell you, the fruit that it brings out of our life is incredible. Incredible. So, we are to build a strong relationship with Jesus, a disciple. We are to build a strong home life, marriage, family, and other relationships with friendships. Um, we are to build a strong, healthy mind and body. And then we are to build a strong work ethic life. 
I use the letters D's. We are disciples, we are devoted, we are disciplined, we are diligent. And finally, we are to build a legacy. Legacy. With the word driven. So we're driven by legacy. That's what drives us. And the next slide, that's my date of birth. 30th of August, 1979. There's a hyphen and there's 20 because I'm going to die in some 20 somewhere down the line. I don't think I'm going to make it to the 21 or something, something, something. But in the 20s somewhere, that's why I didn't put another date next to it because I'm not dead yet, right? Still alive. So I left it there at 20. And that's with all of us, yeah? We all have a starting day of our life and a starting year. And because you are still living in this building, it will be just like, just like mine. There's no adding to it just yet. There's another two digits to be added on there that will come whenever God so wills to take us home. But in between that and that, there's this little there thing that's called a, a hyphen. And that hyphen represents so much of things in, in life. It, it basically represents your life. It represents the year that you lived and the years that you lived. And it represents the legacy of your life. And whilst we are in a world that we are building inheritance for our children, we've got to leave a legacy behind. Because legacies are a lot more than just an inheritance. It's more than just money and a house or the AMC pot and all of that. It's about who we are, what we taught them, the values, what we believe in, the memories, the persons that they've become, the persons who we are. Legacy. And in this year, just to realize that it's another year that God's given to you and it's given to me to continue, amen, to continue to build our legacy. And until the day that Jesus calls us home, we will be building our legacy. And so to pay attention to it. Pay attention that in what we're building. Because in Hebrews 9 and verse 27, the writer in the book of Hebrews says, for it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. That means one day, the 79-20, two more digits is going to be added on. And his thing is this, is that is when you're gone, what's the middle going to be like? What would people say about it? What would, what would be the, test, the testimonials, the tributes? When we stand, and you know, obviously that when we were in glory and then they hosting a funeral for us, I mean, would people be lining up to actually speak about what happened in between that period about you. And as I endeavor in my life to build a legacy, I hope that you realize that you are building a legacy. You know, it's, it may not be all fancy, and it may not be all elaborate, and it may not be all out there, and it may not be all, you know, frills and twirls. But just being genuine, honest, fun-loving, good-hearted people. People that love God, people that just do life humbly, people that just serve others, people that just walk in his way, people that just are in, are in pursuit of just doing what's right, people that are just, you know, with all struggles in life, still, still keep pressing on, never giving up, never throwing in the towel, have good morals, good values, good mannerisms. These are, these are things we don't pay attention to, isn't it? But it's legacy that we're building. I always think about the story of David and of Jonathan. And when, when Jonathan died and Saul died, David went looking after for who's left in the house of Saul, not for Saul's sake, but for Jonathan's sake. I always say, who will come after looking for, for my home? Amen? Who will look for my home and say, you know what? I'm looking for this man's sake. And we want to take care of my home. Mephibosheth got taken care of because, not of Saul, but because of Jonathan. Legacy. I pray this morning, you know, that as we step out of here, hopefully that the sermon and, and in time to do a series about it, you know, this stirs conversation within our lives. And if there's the areas that we need to work on, work on it. God's given us another year to do so. If there's places in our lives that need addressing, go ahead and do that. Don't wait another day. Don't press, procrastinate about it. There's people you've got to forgive. Go ahead and forgive them. There's people you've got, to, you've got to remove from your life. Remove them from your life. Don't just leave the WhatsApp group. Remove them from your life. 
you know, if there's, if, if, if there's toxic relationships in your life that's pulling you down and it's dragging you down, it's time maybe that you need to just step away from it. But you knew these people for all your life, but they're toxic to you. It's time that you've got to take the decision to say, you know what, this is toxic. It's leading me astray. I'm not fulfilling my potential. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about friends. <laughs> I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about there are people that are around us that we are keeping in our lives that as a father that you have in your life that, that they, are, they are poor examples of fathers and they're pulling you down as a father. That you're not the father that you're supposed to be doing because you're hanging up on a Friday or Saturday night at a bar with them rather than being at home. And you're missing out on the life of your kids or missing out on the life with your wife and your spouse or your husband. I think it's time that we need to address these things, isn't it, within us? Rather than just you looking at it as a, as a hindrance in our lives and making excuse of why we can't address it, it's about using this year that's ahead of us and building our lives. And for some of us, we may have to rebuild. There's nothing wrong rebuilding. There's nothing wrong renovating anything in your life and in your heart. This morning, I hope you hear my heart today. I hope you hear it today. As Paul encouraged the church, and he said, this is what you're doing, guys, and I'm so proud of you because you're encouraging each other and you're building each other up. Pray we just, we just do that, and we just build each other up. And I want to encourage you, build, build. Don't ever get complacent. It will breed contempt. Don't, don't, don't get complacent. Don't get comfortable. Keep, keep making certain. Have checkpoints in your life. And even if your kids are married and God, still check up on them. You're still their parents. Still their parents. Check up. See if they're okay. You know, and if you have parents, kids, check up on your parents and see if they're okay. Amen? Amen? You got siblings. Maybe the relationship's not the best. Maybe it's time that you try and work on it a little bit. Let's build. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning. And for this word, Lord, and thank you for that you've given me the opportunity to preach on it and share it with Lord this morning. And over every household today, Lord, and over every family. And first start with our lives, Lord, as we firstly walk in your way. Help us to have a daily walk with you, Lord. And help us that we have, Lord, a home and a family life that we're working on, Lord. And pray that, Lord, we're working in our own, own lives, taking care of ourselves as well. And, Lord, even in places that we work in, Lord, that we're diligent, Lord, and the fruit of that is evident. And through it, Lord, without even realizing what we're doing is that we're building a legacy. Help us to be, Lord, driven by that every day, my Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for every home today. I seal them under the blood of Jesus this, this morning. And you know, you just cover them, Father. And as they would even go approach the week ahead, be with them, strengthen them, cover them. Lord, meet every need in their homes and their families this morning, my Father. Thank you for this word. Thank you for our time. And as we go, use us for your glory, O oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. We love you so much. Take care of yourselves. Have an awesome week. Stay well and stay blessed. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell notification so that you'll get a notification every single time we upload. Stay blessed. See you next week.